Again, it is good tonight to have Brother Mike Mayhew. Uh, I guess all those years ago when I first answered the call to preach, Brother Mike, I guess, was the second pastor that I know that allowed me to stand in the pulpit of the church he was pastoring. I never forgot that. Uh, I, I wasn't no young little boy, but when it come to being in the ministry, I was still snot-nosed and wet behind the ears. And yet, he allowed me to stand in the pulpit that he was responsible for. And a lot of people don't understand this, but at the time he was pastor of at Meadows Baptist Church, and even though I was in the pulpit that Sunday night, if I'd have said something unscriptural, mm -hmm. doctrinally unsound, mm -hmm. blasphemous, or, excuse me ladies, just downright stupid, and he had not set me down, he would have had to give account to God for that. That's right. Because as pastor of that church, he was responsible for what was in that pulpit. I will never forget the opportunity, Brother Mike, that you gave me. And not just there, but the times that I've been down to true gospel. I appreciate it more than you know. You come on, you preach whatever the Lord's laid on your heart. I appreciate you and this fam. I really do. And I'm thankful for their stand for all these years. God bless you. All right, we appreciate the opportunity. Certainly, I appreciate the opportunity now to uh, be able to preach anywhere the Lord allows me to. After being uh, retired, I, I, I really didn't want to use that word. And deacons, and they said, no, I don't use the word to uh, resign. It made it sound like something's wrong. I said, well, and I talked to my daughter, Pam. They got college education. I barely finished high school. <laughs> had to cheat my way through there. <laughs> but they've been a good football player. They kind of just checked me on out, you know. But anyway, I do appreciate Brother Wayne letting you come. Hope you let you know. I, I thought about this morning with him. Now, I really felt sorry for Brother Wayne because yeah, I've been there. Yeah. And it's kind of like a frog that gets in your throat and it crosses his leg. <laughs> and he wouldn't uncross it. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, and I, I really, you know, people really forget about a preacher's throat. That's, yeah. his, that's his life. That's mm -hmm. his ministry. Mm -hmm. And when it messes up, it aggravates his stuff yeah. inside of it. Yeah. Now, I did learn uh, after 43 years of pastoring, if I had a toll, if I could make it Sunday morning, I'd get somebody to preach Sunday night. But I, I did, but if I did, it really messed it up, you know. So I learned that the hard way and learned a lot of things. Appreciate these veterans. And uh, appreciate uh, uh, my, that crowd in the back. Now I'm gonna tell you, they if you don't try to shake hands, they growl at you. <laughs> and I, I know all the stuff we tried to do with COVID-19. I know y'all, y'all had I mean at one time 30, yeah, close to it. We had 37 uh, when they first come out. To see, it started in uh, March, whatever it started. By September, we had 37. He really heard it. And uh, it, it took a long time to rebound from that. And uh, so I, I prayed for y'all, felt sorry for you, and, and had a few more down through the years. I mean, you know, this has been a long draw, and it ain't gone yet. You know, I don't know what happened to the flu for two years, but you know, but it's yeah. back. And, uh, but uh, appreciate the opportunity. Now, I sung this song, and being Veterans Day, I, I sung it down at Brother Roscoe. Now, the first Sunday I had... Uh, it was a tough. My first Sunday away from the church was the hardest day in my and Pam's life in a long time. When you've done something for 43 years, and all of a sudden, you know, you, you know that was my church. I called the preach there. There are 32 years. Pastor there 25, and Pam was there 56 years. No, 36 years. <laughs> but I, you know, uh, it was hard on her. You know, but. Uh, uh, we appreciate God's using us and, and uh, hope He will continue to use us. And I hadn't got up any cards, anything. And I don't know what to put on it. I'm, I'm figuring out what. 
I just want to be a help to church. Amen. Amen. You know, I feel like I, I pastored for 43 years. I feel like I can, I definitely can preach the revivals. I have preached them, and, and I certainly can be a help to the preachers, and Amen. especially younger preachers. Now, back then, Brother Wayne and I was young. We was young men then. <laughs> I don't know what's happened. We was young men then. But uh, <clears throat> time has a way of changing things, doesn't it? Yeah. But I, I thought of that, you know, uh, I want to die on the battlefield, and... Uh, uh, I have about four or five songs that I can sing without music, and uh, and I sung this down Brother Roscoe's, and uh, Brother Randy heard me, and they had a revival, right, through Wednesday night, I think. Yeah, yeah, this week, yeah, because I put a singer Wednesday night, he called me to sing, you know. Uh, if you don't know Brother Randy, he's a I, I told them I could sing about four or five. Well, come on, sing, and uh, people don't like to leave the church uh, on uh, Wednesday nights, so we'll, we'll be trying to holler there. But uh, I'm, I'm, my throat's a little, a little hoarse myself. And uh, but anyway, so just don't shake hands with those and they will bite you back there. All right? <laughs> they will. They bite. And uh, and uh, but uh, this uh, uh, in dedication to this. And I, I won't say this seriously as I can. Uh, I want to die on the battlefield. We may die yeah. for the cause of Christ. Yeah. Yes, All that live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yeah. And the church that stands as, as this church, as true gospel stood uh, for 55 years, we celebrated. Uh, truth is, does, is not light anymore. Right. As long as you compromise, now they, they're not going to bother the churches that go along with everything, right. Right. transgenders and homosexuals and ordain this and ordain that and all that, they're going to be fine. The churches that stand for the truth are going to be persecuted. Yeah. And uh, all the disciples died a martyr's death except one, and John on the Isle of Patmos died there, but he, they tried to kill him, but I don't know, they boiled him in oil. And uh, so uh, I like this song. I'll give you this quickly. Uh, the reason I'm singing it is uh, uh, I used to go to those Monday night fellowships, still do when I can, but we had a guy, uh, what's his name? Buddy Whitten. Buddy He sang this every, about every time, and people wanted to hear it. So I got brother, little Richard Nelson. Now, he used to come here and sing, crippled boy, and uh, crippled since he's two years of age, and not able to come to church anymore. And he, I got him singing, and then he's sick, and he can't come. So I just started singing myself. So you listen to the words of it, and uh, I, I'm sure you've heard it, and uh, it'll be a blessing to you. One day as I was thinking of unseen things above, the Savior spoke unto me and filled my heart with love. I'm going to die on this battlefield. I'm going to die in this war. I'm going to die on this battlefield with glory in my soul. I used to have some people who walked and talked with me. But since I've been converted, they turned their backs on me. I want to die on this battlefield. I'm going to die in this war. I'm going to die on this battlefield with glory in my soul. Some says give me silver, some says give me gold. But I say give me Jesus who saved my dying soul. I'm going to die on this battlefield. I'm going to die in this war. I'm going to die on this battlefield with glory in my soul. I take this gospel trumpet and I begin to blow. Oh Lord, if you will help me, I blow it wherever I go. I want to die on this battlefield. I'm going to die in this war. I'm going to die in this battlefield with glory in my soul. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. How many have heard that song? Amen. I wonder if you've heard that one. And I, I was, me and Pam went on a bus trip with uh, Gospel Baptist in Greensburg. And uh, 46 on there. And uh, 
I sung it on the bus, and uh, nobody had ever heard that song. Mm -hmm. I, and uh, and I sung it at Roscoe's down there, and somebody, I think it was Ron, Ronnie Baker, he looked at that, that thing was written in 1800 and something. That's an old song, yeah. right? by his old man brother Wayne. <laughs> and, uh, and <laughs> but uh, I couldn't believe that nobody on that out of forty six had never well my wife had. And uh, well Pee Wee and Teresa, they were on the bus and uh, they had naturally, but uh, so there's forty two people that had never heard the song. So let's turn to first John quickly. And uh, now, brother, uh, the pastor has got me loaded up. He says I got water, <clears throat> got cough drops, and uh, anything you want. I said, Well, I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't drink Pepsi anyway. But, uh, uh, but that's uh, I, I want to deal with a, a thought tonight. And uh, you know, you, you want to preach what the Lord wants you to preach, but uh, sometimes that's uh, to discern, you just preach the word of God, God's going to bless it. Amen? Amen. I think sometimes we get wrapped up and, and uh, on so much that we, uh, I heard somebody talk about, uh, some preacher said, well, the first thing that comes to your mind to preach, that's what you need to preach. <laughs> well, that'll solve a lot of problems sometimes because you get two or three things, you know, and, uh, that you want to say and you got so much to say and a little time to say it in. And uh, but uh, First John chapter five, and we're going to deal with tonight with uh, dealing with doubt. Now you know the Bible speaks of assurance, verses of assurance, knowing that we're saved, and we can know that we know that we know right. we're saved. Amen. But here in First John, and uh, I've got my uh, watch out. It's kind of like the little boy that went to the church with the, the little Catholic boy, and, the, and he just kept asking the. Catholic, the little Baptist boy was asking the Catholic, what in the world is going on? What is he doing now? So the little Catholic church came to the Baptist church and said, and the preacher took his watch off and says, what does that mean? He said, it don't mean a thing. <laughs> <laughs> <clears throat> so it don't mean a thing. I got it right here. And uh, so uh, uh, this is, I uh, uh, want to be a help to you, want encouragement to you, and uh, say something tonight you can leave. Something to get down to your soul. Amen? And uh, dealing with the, uh, the gospel and, and dealing with salvation, the assurance of salvation, and we're certainly living in dark days. Yeah, we, uh, we won't get into that, I'll tell you. Uh, verse 13 of 1 John, uh, five, chapter 5, and verse 13. These things have I written unto you, first, uh, these things have I written unto you, uh, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that you may know, I underline that in your Bible, that you may know that you have eternal life, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. Father, bless this time together. Thank you for the invitation to be at this church, Eisen Baptist Church. What a history. Uh, what a foundation uh, that this church has had. We've seen many years of uh, honor the Lord. Bless tonight in this service. Bless your word. Bless your servant to be able to be a blessing to the people that you have assigned me to be able to preach to tonight that I can say something that would be a help and be an encouragement to the hearts. So we can leave here tonight rejoicing. Well, we fail in that, Lord. You tell us over and over to rejoice in the Lord. I say again, rejoice. And uh, we have all rights to be happy people in the Lord tonight. Not because of the world's situation, their circumstances, because, God, we know that we know that we've been saved by the good grace of God. In Jesus' name, and for Christ's sake, save the lost, revive our hearts, is God's people. Amen. Amen. Now, you can be seated. It says in, in the book of uh, John, uh, I won't ask you to turn there, uh, we know the Lord uh, in the last chapter, as the brother said tonight, a lot of read uh, what the Lord said, but it says in John chapter 20, and verse 21, or 31, we know that Thomas had doubted the Lord. And well, doubted that him being there with the disciples. Right. And he missed out on that. And you miss something when you miss church. Yeah. Uh, uh, there's, and we know that he was there the second time. And it says, Thomas, because you have seen me, you believe. Yeah. 
But he said, Blessed are those that will never see me yet believe. Amen. Now we'll we'll see here tonight, and if you've seen Jesus, don't tell me about it, all right? <laughs> Amen. I, I I've seen him by faith. Yes. Right. And that's what's going to get us to heaven. <laughs> but he says here in verse uh, um, verse 30, he says here, as he writes in verse 30 and 31, uh, it says, but uh, verse 31, these things uh, these things are written that you may uh, that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, his son, of the, uh, and believing that he might have life through his name. Yeah. Now thank God for the name of Jesus. Now here in John, he's telling us and writing to how that we evangelize. How do we evangelize people? How, how, do, we, how do we evangelize? We tell them about Jesus. We tell them that Jesus saves and Jesus delivers and Jesus forgives. Now when we come to John, he's writing to believers. And John is writing to us that we may be edified. Now the word edified is very simple. It's to build up. To build up yourself in the most holy faith. And to build yourself up in the truth of the Word of God. And so we find that here, uh, we know that God doesn't want us to doubt. But there's sometimes in our life, if you've been saved uh, for a real long time, you may have it nailed tonight, but sometime in, in your walk of life, you probably have at least one time have doubted your salvation. Right. How many have yeah. doubted your yeah. salvation? Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Everybody here. Now, I remember the story about the lady that came to D.L. Moody, and uh, she says, I've been saved 25 years, and I never, never have doubted my salvation. And D.L. Moody, D.L. Moody looked at her and said, well, most likely you, you've never been, uh, I doubt you've ever been saved. <laughs> now, that, you know, the D.L. Moody. So here we find that here he writes this, in this verse, these things have I written to you that believe on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. Now, whatever, we know that John's dealing with the fact that he wants you to know, right. but if you don't know, that's your fault if you're saved tonight. You can know that you're saved. Now, we've got all kinds of ideas. People say, oh, you can't know you're saved. Well, the Bible says we can. We just read it. We can know that we're saved and know the reason we're saved yeah. and know that God gives us eternal life. Hallelujah to God for that. Yeah. And so uh, we find that here, uh, doubt is doubting, doubting is not good. Right. We know that. It's, uh, doubting is kind of like a pain to your body. Pain's not good. But it does let you know that something's going on. Yeah. It's a warning sign. Amen? Yeah. If you hurt wrong, now you get, if you get 71 years of age, yeah. if you go to the doctor every time you have a pain, you stay there. Yeah. Yeah. And you say, well, it'll pass. <laughs> <laughs> and it does most of the time and sometimes it never comes back that same pain again but hey if you continue to have pain in the same area you've got to go to the doctor amen, amen. and uh, and so we find that here he deals with the fact here that doubting is not good and we know that uh, pain is not good but it's a warning sign right, right. it warns us that something is going on in our body that may uh, uh, needs attention to so doubting and, and pain and arguing, you know. Huh? Now, it's kind of like a person says, uh, I'd be dumb to stand up here and I can tell you, me and Pam, this has been a big year for me. Uh, I've been saved 50 years, May the 21st, 1972. Been married 53 years, June the 27th. And uh, 53 years. Now, be, you would not believe me if I would say me and Pam's never had an argument, would you? And I'm not saying that these things are good, but it's a fact of life. Yep. It's a fact of life. And uh, I, you know, I, maybe I want to put on my card. Maybe I can evangelize. I can preach on the home, and I can preach on successful being married. And uh, so, well, what would you tell people about how to stay married? It's just fight it out, get over it, make up. <laughs> And forgive. That's a big word in the Word of God. Forgive one another. And most church problems and the arguments in the church is because people won't forgive one another. Yeah. And say one big word, I'm sorry. Yeah. Now that's a hard thing to say. Or I'm wrong. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you fuss all night. It's kind of like the guy on, <laughs> went on one bus trip and he said, now I promised me and my wife made a covenant when we got married that we never would go to bed being mad. 
He said, well, I've helped up to him. He says, I've stayed up all night a lot of nights. <laughs> Amen. So we find that it's a fact of life. Now here, it's very important that we can know. Now, here's the problem that a lot of people have. You know, in 2 Timothy 1 12, Paul says, I know in whom I have. Right. He does not say I know what I believe, right. but I know in whom I have believed. Now, yeah. uh, the religious world, we, we still are a religious country. Yeah. A religion and, and that's going to hell. We need true religion. The Bible talks about true religion in James. So, And I don't like to use the word, but it's, it's in the book of James. But we know that we talk about it's, that is salvation. Because salvation is of the Lord. Right. And we as God's people that are saved and born again of the Spirit of God, we have salvation, which we know it all begins with the Lord. And Paul says it's very important that here we have the assurance of our salvation. Number one, very important, in soul winning. Yeah. And you can't lead somebody to the Lord and tell them how to get saved when you don't know you're saved. Yeah. And then number two, it helps us in our life to have this assurance it helps us in this present life to enjoy what God's already given. Yeah. Right. Amen. God wants us to enjoy our salvation. Now I know we're living in difficult times, and I know it's living in hard times. And and uh, boy, when, and uh, you know, I, I thought about Paul. Good gracious, alive. Here's Paul locked up in jail, and uh, they're in Philippians and. And uh, bad circumstances, did not have any convenience, probably uh, sword running down through the middle of the jail. Right. And just a, a horrible situation. Uh, he went at the Holiday Inn sitting out the pool drinking lemonade. And uh, hey, he was in jail. Yeah. Yeah. But yet yeah, Paul turns around, I'll tell you what we need to do. We need to rejoice. And I say again, rejoice. Furthermore, what are you rejoicing about, Paul? Because I know that I'm in the hands of God. Yeah. Right. I know the providence has, God's got me here for a reason. Amen. And when we get to that point, we know that everything in our life is for a reason and for a purpose. So we find it here. Let me just give you uh, at least three things. I got uh, Jackie give me a point today. If I, I'll give you that whether uh, it's 10 o'clock or not. <laughs> but here, uh, there's birthmarks. Everybody has birthmarks. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, I kind of noticed from mine, my birthmark's about gone. Uh, I guess I outlived my birthmark, you know. I, and I, it used to be a pretty good-sized birthmark on, the, on my thigh right here, and it's, it's gone, you know. But most people, we, we're born and we have birthmarks. There's a birthmark to let us know that God gives us here in this chapter. And boy, what a chapter this is. Boy, John, you know, John doesn't play around. Right. He just shoots it out there straight. And he, he thanked me and Brother Wayne straight. You, you just read this book of these five books of five chapters, and uh, he's straight as an air. He yeah. just calls them a lie. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, so first of all, let me just give you this, and we'll move quickly. There's a test. Now, I didn't like... Uh, when I was in school, the only test I liked was true or false. <laughs> you 50% being right whether you knew what the world was going on or not. Amen. And I like those kind of tests. You know, and, and, and Brother Wayne mentioned that. You know, you know that Paul says in, in Corinthians, he's, he's talked about in chapter 13, verse 5, examine yourself whether you be in the faith. Yeah. So, uh, you know, a lot of times we say, well, we're going to have some tests made. See what's wrong with it. And we, we need to run some tests in our spiritual life to see what's wrong with us spiritual and to get us where we need to be. Yeah. And uh, we, we talk about revival. Boy, you know, you can't. We, we certainly need revival. I need revival. I need it every day. But, you know, the Bible teaches us there's a lifestyle revival. So the first test that God deals with, that John deals with here, is the commandment test. That is, uh, let's read together. You there? First John. Let me get my helpers on here. And chapter 2 and verse 3. He says, And hereby, now get your Bible, follow along with us. And whereby, uh, and hereby do we know that we love, know Him. Now he's telling how we can know Him. If we keep His commandment. And he that saith, I know Him, and keepeth not His commandments, is a liar. Yeah. And the truth is not in Him. But whosoever keepeth His word... In him verily is the love of God perfected. Hereby know we that we are in him. And he that saith he abides in him ordered himself also to walk even as he walks. Right. 
Now Christ is our example. And be Him being our example is that we, you know, and we all to be examples to each other. The Bible says we all live in epistles. And people say, now, don't look to me, look to Jesus. Now, that sounds good, and I did it for a long time. I made that statement through, I studied through the book of Corinth, and Paul says, look to me. Yeah. Now, what am I ever say to me, but look at me. So we find that he says, here is Ralph, and now nobody here tonight is, a com is perfect in keeping the commandments. Right. Okay. And nobody's here tonight saved because you keep the commandments. Right. Mm. We know the Bible teaches nobody, nobody's justified by the law. Yeah. So we know that what he's talking about here, the word keepeth is, and you all know now that word keep here, that means as in the older days on the, the, sea, the sea captain, as he's staring the ship, he would get his eyes on the star. Yeah. Right. Now that means that he was depending on that to navigate him. Thank God we've got the bright morning star of the Lord Jesus Christ Amen. that's navigating us yeah. in this dark world. Have you ever thought about what you do without Him? Or what in the world would people do without Him today? That's the reason we have drugs and alcohol and everything we see is dealt with alcohol. People, they can't do nothing without <coughs> drinking and getting drunk. Thank God we come together as God's people and uh, we, we, just, we just rejoice in the Lord. Now, I'm not always saying that's easy, but here, the key word here is that word, keep your eyes on Jesus Christ. Right. Right. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. So we find that he's talking about the law keepers here. We're law keepers. Now, we, uh, we have that desire in our heart to keep the law. Now, we find that here, uh, that is a desire to keep the commandments. Right. Now, I got saved 50 years ago. Immediately, immediately, God put a desire in my heart to serve Him. Praise the Lord. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I didn't know what I was doing. I didn't know what had happened to me. And when I got saved, I couldn't quote John three sixteen. But hey, I just knew I was saved. Yeah. I was a new yeah. creature in Christ Jesus, and, and therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. And all things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. Yeah. So we find that here a desire to keep Him. In. Now, living uh, here, here's the, here's we know this. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Yeah. Yeah. Old things have passed away, and all things have become new. Now, I preach this, and I'm not criticizing in my, in my younger days, and this, I've got saved in 72, and, uh, and some preachers, uh, well-meaning preachers like myself, I've preached a lot of things, I had to go back and retract, and they show when you get saved, all those old things are gone. Well, it took me for about a year to figure out that Mike Manuel was still Mike Manuel. Mm -hmm. That Mike Manuel still had a problem with his flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But what that verse is teaching is <coughs> that we have a new position in Christ. Yeah. Right. And that new position in Christ is, is new and fresh every day that we get up. And, you know, let me just say this. <laughs> I mean, hey, we talk about revival and uh, boy, I, I like to try to have it all. I like to preach revival. All I, 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 I like to get people stirred up. I mean, and we should be stirred all the time. And we come to church. Well, I sure hope I get a blessing today. And uh, I, I'm looking for a blessing. Why are you looking for a blessing? The Bible says we're already blessed with all spiritual Amen. blessings. Amen. That's right. right. We come here tonight, and the, the people that study the Bible more than me tell me there's 33 things happen to you when you got saved. It's already happened. Yeah. If we were just getting excited about what we already have and what's already happened, and thank God our name has been recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life, we yeah. already as good as John's already seen us there. Yeah. <laughs> and so, Richie, thank you going to make it. I know I'm going to make it. Yeah. Yeah. Already, there. already there in Christ. In Christ, I'm already there. And so we have that desire. Now, living, and here we see this principle. Uh, that means you study the Bible, we don't have time uh, because of time. Uh, that is, you can no longer live any way you want to right. and go to heaven. Mm -hmm. Matter of fact, you don't want to live any way you want to. Right. Yeah. And in it, the fact is, the Word of God teaches us that if you can sin, and I, we can sin, we do sin, but if you can be sin and happy in it, you're not saved. Yeah. Yeah. Amen? Basically what we see here, we're going to see it in just a moment, that is, 
a person has a new goal for life that please God, you are not saved by the commandments, but we want to keep them because we love God. We love the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at chapter, uh, let's turn over to chapter 3. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 6. Now it tells us here, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 6. Now let me just say, uh, there's no contradictions in the Word of God. It says in verse 6, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither know him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Now here it is, verse 8. He that committeth sin is of the devil. For the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. And whosoever is born of God do not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he is, uh, because he is born of God. Now here, here's a principle, what's it saying here. Now we know, uh, we just, uh, in 1 John chapter uh, 1, let's turn over there, right there. If any man say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth's not in him. And we know that it says in verse uh, uh, 10, or if we, verse 9, if we confess our sins, He faithful and forgive us of our sin. Verse 10, if we say that we have not sinned, we have made Him a liar, and His word is not in, him, in us. So what's the Bible teaching there? It's simply teaching this. The Bible never contradicts it. That which has been born in you by the Holy Ghost of God and the Holy Spirit of God in you will never sin and cannot <coughs> sin. That's the reason that you're not happy in sin anymore because a holy and a righteous God lives within you, right. the person Amen. of the Holy Spirit of God, and you cannot be happy living in sin. Right. Now you go to the door and knock on, and, and knock on the door and somebody uh, come to the door and they may have a Budweiser in their, in their hands or and looking at pornographic material on the uh, phone or whatever, and they say, yeah, I got saved 20 or 30 years ago. Ah. And Brother Wayne mentioned this. Huh. That is, if, if you're saved, God chases every son who yeah. belongs to him. Right. Every, the Bible says, he, in whom he loveth and whom he has received. Those that he has received. Now we can talk about receiving Jesus all we want to. And the world will tell you that. We can go talk to people, oh yeah, I received Jesus one day. But here, here's a very important principle here. Has he received you? Yeah. That's the important thing. Is has he received you? And so, preacher, how can we know that we uh, that not only have I received him, but he's received me? I'll tell you how you know. In whom the Lord loved, he chastened every son whom he received. Hallelujah, God. I know I'm a child of God. I can't get by with anything without the chastened hand of God on my life. Amen, boy. Right. Amen. I mean, hey, you say something hateful to your wife. I mean, you know. I mean, you don't have to wait for days. I mean, you don't have to wait for years. You don't even have to wait to get here to hear Brother Wayne preach. Because you, you know, you are homeschooled. Titus chapter 2. The grace of God bringeth salvation to everyone. And the grace of God teaches us denying godliness and worthy lust and live soberly Amen. and righteously whereat in this present world. And that immediately when you got saved and God moved in your heart by the Holy Spirit of God and grace set up a classroom in your heart to teach you what's right and what's wrong, whether the preacher gets on or not, and he's already there. Homeschool. Amen. Boy, I need to some homeschooling. Yes, we're saved by the grace of God, but I'm going to tell you what. Here, we want to keep His commandments because God lives within us in the person of the Holy Spirit. Now, let me just say this quickly, and, uh, and uh, we're going to move here. First, Second Peter chapter 1, verse, won't turn these verses because of time. Brother Wayne said, have y'all out of here by 10, at least by 10. Get you out... Get you out in time to see the Hallmark movie. <laughs> Some of you go ahead. You know, I got to watch it. Amen. I know you do, but hey. <laughs> but hey, 
and got the train of thought going. What was what was they going to say? The, the first Peter, second Peter, chapter one, verse four. Now here, here's what I. The Bible says, having this promise, we have God's divine nature. Right. Having escaped this corruption, that paraphrasing that because of that. But everybody's saved. Now, before you're saved, listen to me. Before you were saved, before I was saved, I only had one nature. You know what it was? It was a depraved nature. That's it. A sin nature. All together. I had no Holy Spirit. I had no power. I had no training in the Word of God. When I got saved, I couldn't have quoted John 3. Matter of fact, I couldn't have quoted the shortest verse in the Bible, Jesus wept. <laughs> I mean, hey, rejoice. And they say, really, that may be the shortest verse. Rejoice in the Lord. And, uh, and but, hey, I didn't know anything about the Word of God. But God immediately moved in my heart. And I took on another nature. That was God's nature. It talked about that seed, that holy seed of God's nature that lives within me. Now, my problem is, and your problem is, we have two natures. That's the difference between us, the world, and we say, what's wrong with those people in the world? It was just like we were before we were saved. Right. We get more aggravated with people in the world. They just act <coughs> the way they ought to be. I get aggravated with the people in the world, in the church, that don't act the way they should act. Right. Yeah. Now let me just say this. I've been around a long time. There's a lot of people that have problems, and I've dealt with people that doubted their salvation, that live better lives than I did. And, uh, and uh, the people that should be doubting their salvation and living mean as a snake, they don't ever seem to doubt their salvation. Yeah, well, maybe because that's where the devil's got it. Huh. But here it is. We see that we have a nature. I, my sister's here. I've got a first cousin here tonight. The Lord's. Uh, we got southern blood, and she's got uh, whatever her mother's maiden name was. My mother was a southern. My daddy was a manual, a Mike manual. And I, I, I've been working on things of this old depraved nature for 71 years, especially for 50 years. I didn't give a flip before I say. Yeah. The old saying, I was going to hell and enjoying the trip. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, sin didn't bother me. I enjoyed it. Oh, once I got saved. Amen. So, preacher, are you perfect? Never will be. But I'm perfect in Jesus. Yes. That's right. Amen. Right. Amen. Been made whole in the Christ. Right. And so we find that here is this principle, the nature of God. I mean, I, I, I've worked on things, and I'm still working on things. Now, whether uh, I believe whether Wilton, Wayne mentioned this this morning about not being perfect. And I, you know, I, I really thought, and I've said this, I really thought I'd be further along than I am after being saved 50 years. Yeah. I mean, really, I mean, I'm kind of disappointed sometimes in where I am in my spiritual life. That I can still get mad. Huh. Yeah. And I can still think things uh-huh. in my mind that should be. It's so, preacher, what's, why do you do that? Because I still have a depraved nature. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Now let me move quickly. There's a companion test. Chapter 3 and verse 14. It says in chapter 3 and verse 14, Wherefore, beloved sin that we look... Uh, yeah, chapter 3 and verse 14, it says, Nevertheless, uh, sin according to his promise... Well, I'm in Peter. Let me get it. I knew something was right. I knew I'm getting bad, but I didn't know I was in the wrong. I'm in Peter. Let me get back to John. Oh, wow, I got all that. It says, now, here, here's a test. Are you with me? Chapter 3, verse 14. Mar- verse 13, marvel not, my brother. If the world hates you, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we know it's going to hate us. But verse 14, we know. And he, if you're studying, if you say, I, I want to be a Bible study. Just take the book of John, and everywhere it says we know, right, underline your Bible. Yeah. We know that we have passed from death unto life because we love the brother. Yeah, right. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. And whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Hereby perceive we the love of God, because he laid down his life for us, that we ought to lay down our lives for the brother. Mm-hmm. And here we have a, a, a companion test. Now that is, this is very simple. We are to live the brother. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, Brother Wayne, and I, I'm sure we don't agree with everything. We have our, maybe in, in administration and pastoring, and, and uh, Brother Mark's there now. He's doing a few things different than I did. That doesn't make you wrong, as long as it's in the Scripture, the truth. Mm -hmm. But we all have different things, and, and, uh, and we, we may not march to everybody's beat. But hey, here, here's a reality. You know, I, I don't want to be out of fellowship with no brother and sister. Right. right. I mean, hey, you know, that's, you say, well, preacher, what's wrong with independent Baptists? That's all I know about. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tell you what's wrong with independent Baptists. People has got mad and went off down the road, split and splinter, and, yeah. and, uh, and, right. we, and, and the Southern Baptist just as bad as the independent. I didn't know yeah. that until I moved to Madison. I can tell you, three, three churches down at Madison... Uh, that were split from Southern Baptist churches that started their own church. I didn't know Southern Baptists did that. They got the same problem in the And we have split and splintered so mm -hmm. much that well, now, yeah. you know, there's churches now having to combine to make it. Yeah. You say, preacher, why? Because people don't love the way they're to love. Yeah. They don't forgive. Well, instead of forgiving them, thank God I just go down the road and start me or go somewhere else and start another church or join another church and just forget about that. Listen here, in your mind you know that if you have an heart against a brother, it can't be settled until you got that thing settled with them. Right. Now that's a mark, and there's a birthmark of us being saved. Love the brother. That is, to be right with my brother is to be right with the church. Now this is in a it says here, it talks about that we, uh, we, we talk about this companionship. Now, here's we see that we can, a lot of people say, well, thank God I can worship God at home. Well, I, I never argue with that. Never will argue with it. Right. It should be. But as you watch somebody tell you, I can worship God at home as good as I can the church. That's a lot right out of here. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Because the commandment of God says in Hebrews chapter 10, yes, verse 25, forsake not to assemble yourself no, together as a matter of some is, but exhorting one another, exhorting one another, pray for one another, edify one another. And the whole Bible is talking about what we do one for another. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And, it, and it's, uh, the Bible speaks about, it doesn't say saints. A saint, it talks about saints. Every time the word saints or mention the word God, it's plural, it's got an S on it. And listen here, the church, you, you just, you and Brother Wayne just want the church and you just want people to come to give and, and uh, to keep the church going, to keep the lights. You just want it to look good on. No, it's a command of God. Don't you forsake. Why? Because Jesus Christ died for the church. Right. The church is his body. Right. Now, two things. If I say me and Brother Wayne was up here working, for some reason I'm down on my knees and I got my hands right here and Brother Wayne comes and stands on my hand, fingers here. I said, Brother Wayne, you're on my, you're on my hand, uh, body. You're hurting me. I'm going to stand on your hand or your finger. I don't care what he's standing on my feet or not. You, this hurt my whole body. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And listen here, uh, much of our problems of the day, of the modern day church today, is that we've been fighting and we're quarreling with one another yeah. and Brother Wayne didn't get on that word mumbling and murmuring. Uh -huh. It doesn't say blessed is those that, the, the Bible says blessed are those that mourn, but he says here that it, they was there wanting in the insult and the wilderness because they mumbled, right. they complained right. And, right. And, the, and we come in and we look for thoughts. Yeah. Yeah. Ah, uh, uh, a battle between this word fight, you know, we're in a battle, we're in a fight. And uh, let, me, let me just give you this one point out of this uh, uh, message that and, uh, you fight to pray, you fight for the fault. But hey, and, and you know what I have to do with? I have to fight from finding fault in the brother. In the oh, brother. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Continuing for the faith yeah. as a fight. And, and, and we, we're so easy to judge other people. And, and if, you, if you see uh, your brother with a little, just a little, uh, a little speck in the eye, you yeah. say, 
and uh, and we got a railroad trussle in on a railroad bean, and we want to get that out, and we want to take care of everybody else's business except our business. If we just lock down and be face to face with God and get right with ourselves and keep ourselves in order where it ought to be, we got a job well full. Amen. Now here, if you want to get my attention, just hurt my body. And the Bible says we are, the Bible says we love our body. Number two, if you want to get my attention, uh, you just hurt my wife. Now she's my bride. Now I'm not the man I used to be, but I'll do all I can to get you on the ground and beat you. Uh, amen. I mean, if I can't do it, I'm like Barney Five, I'll take my little buddy. <laughs> Amen. If you, and that should be the way that we think about the church. Mm -hmm. This is the body of Christ. died for this church. Yeah. Christ died for Eisen Baptist Church. He died. And I know He died for the universal church. I understand that principle. He died for the church as a whole. But you cannot deny the Bible teaches a local church. Yeah. Like this one right here. Like like uh, Isom and, and, and uh, Meadows and all the churches here. They're independent and they're made up of body of believers. Amen. Now, you remember this? I think it's in Acts chapter 9, verse 4. Do you remember this? That Paul, as he was going down the road of Damascus, and he struck down by that blinding light, and God, what did God say to him? Saul, Saul, why persecute thou me? Hey. Personally. That's right. Personally. Yep. And I, I don't know, Josephus says, and the great historical writer says that Paul probably had 5,000 people guilty of, of okaying them to be killed. That's the reason Paul says, if God can save me, he'd save it. Yeah, Amen. Right. Amen? So we see this companionship. You hurt the body. So we, you know... Uh, and it should get our attention. Let me give you the third thing quickly. And that is the, the, the commitment test. Boy, what are we committed to? You know, let me just say this. It says in verse 10, chapter 5, verse 10, we see here uh, the commitment. Boy, this is a big subject. I, uh, I'm not going to hurry over this. It says in, in verse 10, He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar. And because he believeth not, the record that God gave him his Son. The record. That is, you know, used to be that you go to the doctor and they go, let, you know, they go to the cabinet back there and they get the records. They live days old with everything's on the computer. And they would put the, the record there or the book, you know, and uh, there at the door, the doctor would come, whatever he did, I believe he looked at it because he wants, he asked you all the questions. That's the reason I rather sometimes wonder about going to a veterinarian, you know. He can tell what's wrong with the dog, and the dog can't say nothing. <laughs> and they ask you all the questions, what's wrong with it? That's the reason I'm here for you to tell me what's wrong with it. And they want you to do all the work, and they, they get all the money. Yeah. So we find that here he's talking about believe the record that God gave his son. And this is a record. Well, he tells us what the record is. Well, what is the record? As they pull out, you know, if you pull out my record, I've had high blood pressure, I've been on medicine since I was 49, and I've had brain surgery, and these, all that's on there, and that's the record. It's got the record of my medical history of my life. And this is the record that God gave. And this is the record that God has gave to us eternal life, and this life is in His Son. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. This sort of thing, God, how do you know to say? Because God, I believe the record yeah. that God gave His Son, and, and, and through His Son I have what kind of life? Everlasting life, eternal life. That means I can't lose it. Well, I believe right. you can. Well, thank God. You may think you can, but you, and if you think you can, you may never have to start with it. Mm -hmm. And he that have the Son have life. Now they, you don't need a commentary. You don't need Dr. Spot, anybody to clarify. He that have the Son have life, and he that have not the Son have not life. Right. And these things have I written to you that believe. Now, let me give you this. And uh, 
it says here, uh, believe. Now, uh, it's talking about present tense. Yeah. Now, I'm interested. Now, I'm not against this. But you thought, well, thank God I can tell you. I can tell you the time. I can take you to the place. I can show you where I shed those tears. And, uh, and, and that's wonderful. I'm not, I'm not fighting against that, okay? But where are you tonight? If you listen to me on the live stream. Go ahead, preacher. I mean, there's people who have been out of church for 20 years. Yes. They say they believe. But here it says believeth. That is, that's pray. We keep, you said, preacher, the Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 13, that whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You know what I'm doing after 50 years? I'm still calling on God. Yeah. Amen. Still calling on God. And here, here's the present. Let me give you this, uh, you know, uh, this thought here. Everything uh, is like uh, uh, Will Rogers. He, he went to get his uh, uh, pass, passport. And they said, Mr. Rogers, we, we need your birth certificate. Well, why do you need your birth I'm right here, right now. And how many people do you know that used to be in the church. Oh, yeah. Now here, here's a preacher. Mm -hmm. For by grace are we saved through faith. Amen. That not of ourselves is a gift of God. Amen. Now here, here's a principle. That's that's a that's it's not an act, it's a verb, it's an active verb. Uh -huh. That is, he that believeth, that is, you continue to believe. I believe in God more than I've ever believed in. And understand, the more that I know, the more that I don't know. Right. And the more that I need to believe in Him and trust God in these days that we live in. And, and trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not upon your own understanding, but acknowledge Him in all your way. You say, Preacher, I don't understand what's going on. I don't need it. We say, Preacher, what do we need to do? We need to trust God more than we've ever trusted Him in our life. Because we don't know what's going on. But we do know God has something real big for us. Hallelujah, God. Right. Amen. Amen. There's something right. real big on the end of this thing. Yeah. It looks real bad, but I'll tell you what, we're leading right up to that time that God says, boy, as the days get darker, and He says, look up, thank God, when all these things begin to happen, look up your redemption draws oh, now. I'm glad the blessed Jesus is going to come, the trumpet God's going to sound, and the dead in Christ is going to rise. We're going to get out of here and leave it to the Democrats, leave it to the Republicans, <laughs> leave it to the Independents, Amen. leave it to the hell holes yeah. of the world, yeah. leave it to Hollywood, let them have their way. Yeah. Thank God, we out of here one day. Amen. Praise God. There's Amen. a better day coming for God's people. Amen. 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 Uh, right now. So what, here, here's pretty. What are we doing right now? It's right now what you are right now. I don't care. And I, I know, thank God, and, and we have testimony moving, and I'm not fighting that. And, I'm not, and but all the time, you know, what is God doing in your life right now? It's right, present it right now. He that believeth right now is what's God doing? Yeah. I, I'll skip the one. I, I wanted Jackie today when I was getting ready to leave. So now go home, get your nap, and shake us up tonight. Because <laughs> she made another statement. She don't realize what she said. She said, "Don't shake us." Too much. <laughs> we like it that. Now, I know. I, we like it that. But you know that's the reason why we're not having a revival. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. We're not willing. You know, we're not willing to be moved out of our comfort zone. That's yeah. right. We're not willing to pay the cost for revival. Yeah. And I was thinking the other day, Brother Rudolph Lemons drove all the way. It, we go Monday through Saturday night. Now you, you you can't have you can't hardly have a revival through even Friday night. Yep. You you're in competition with the football world, the football fans and basketball fans, and and now we not only and I'm gonna tell you you know and it, it hurt our church and I can tell you what hurt our church and and uh, that it, it's travel ball. Yeah. Yes. It's killing the church. Yeah. yeah. We're not willing to pay the cost. 
Well, you know, well, well yeah, Brother Wayne, I'm going to get so-and-so in here. Well, how long are you going to have him in here? Well, we're going to go through fish night Friday night. Uh-huh. What do you think? We are a bunch of heathens. Uh-huh. Yeah. We are a bunch of heathens. Just save with the good grace of God. Yeah. And have God. We need God's help in every day. <coughs> now, I know. I, I'm like you. I And I... I I'm a type A person. I'm 71. I still can't stay still. And after I sit for so long, and unless it's just an unusual service, and, and, and if God gets in it, I'll stay there at 12 o'clock. But I've never been a preacher just to promote and keep people there because I ask God to never let me forget working people. Yeah. But hey, God gets in it. Hey, we'll, we'll stay there. We, amen. We'll, and, uh, but hey, we need to sell I mean, hey, uh, I don't have much padding back here. I'm numb out. <laughs> Thank God for padded pews. I think it's the most wonderful thing that God ever gave us, padded pews. Hallelujah. Yeah. It ain't padded enough for me. I mean, I like them the thicker they are. And, uh, you know, my brother, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, Jerry Walker had me down to preach. He had a funeral in West Virginia. I preached down there on Sunday morning for him. And they got those chairs. And, uh, Oh, boy, I like that. I almost took it home with me. <laughs> I mean, hey, I'm, I don't know what Brother Wayne helped me. I, I mean, I don't know what's supposed to be doing. I'm a, I'm a member of True Gospel Baptist Church, and I told him I'd give him six months to himself and, to, you know, to me out of the way, me and Pam, and just let him have it. But, hey, uh, I don't really know if what I'm doing is right or not. But, but Pam said, well, what are we supposed to do? I don't know. We just mind God, just... Hey, enjoy ourselves. We've been bound down. I'm not using that word in a bad way. You know, we've been tied down, and it's good to go around. I know I've put preachers on the spot a lot of times. I feel guilty about that. And I, I don't know what to do, but I, I just want to enjoy God. Amen. Enjoy, enjoy hearing preaching and preaching and, uh, and, and maybe ways that, and doing things that different than what I did. And we're close. We're not. This whole thing. This whole thing. This whole thing. Everything I've said, you know what it is? A control issue. Mm-hmm. It's a control issue. Who is in control of your life? Now, isn't it easy? You know, we, you know this this uh, control. Or, uh, and we, we, want, we say we want God to be in control. Do we? Do we really? I mean, I'm talking to myself. <laughs> now, what, how, how would you feel if Brother Wayne, right after I get out and, and uh, say, well, I feel like we need a two-week revival. They may be right. <coughs> two weeks? We can't hardly make it three or four nights. And he wants us here for two weeks. Now, I've, never been, I've never been two weeks. I've been a whole week, but I've never been two weeks myself. But hey, where, where's our, the control? Who's in control of your life? Right. Now, we, we like, and, and I quote this verse from the close. But seek ye first the kingdom of God right. and his righteousness. Mm-hmm. And all these other things shall be added into it. You said, preacher, the preacher don't want us to do anything. That's not so. <coughs> you know, preachers, uh, he went to the coast a few weeks ago and uh, Pam was sick and we we went to High Rock Lake. Never been down there in my life. We, as in between, we get the grandkids closer for them. They had a few days out of school. No, they couldn't drive all the way down there. We want to see the grandkids. And I'm enjoying being with the grandkids so, more than I used to be. You know, I ain't been to God for a month. I talk like I've been gone for a year. But hey, and uh, you know, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these other things shall be added up to you. Here it is. When God, when you put God where he needs to be, in right. control of your life, yeah. God will, he doesn't keep you from everything, Mm-mm. but he makes you put everything in order. <clears throat> And put him first. Yeah. And when you put God first, yeah. everything falls in order yeah. according to where God wants them. Yeah. 
we put the things of the world, not, not things that are bad. Now, we're not talking about simple things. There are a lot of things you can do that's not wrong. You know, I've, never, I've never played a game of golf in my life. Now, I don't think it's wrong to play a game of golf. I could preach against because they ain't ever played. Most preachers preach about what they don't do. <laughs> and uh, you know, Brother Wayne goes to the coast. You don't go to the beach. <laughs> we had a guy down there, Jackie knows, and bought a car, a Ricky Farmer. He, he was coming, he asked Brother Fletcher in the prayer room, he said, Now, Fletcher, and Fletcher, you could pick with Fletcher. He said, well, I just want to know why you go to the coast and all of us go to the hellhole, the beach. <laughs> he turned a little red. <laughs> but he took the joke. I mean, you know, he took what it was being said. And uh, so it's. Is where you've got God in your life. Yeah. Now I know there's certain places you cannot go uh-huh. and God be satisfied. I understand right. that. But there are some things that you can do that will honor the Lord as long as you put Him first. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Huh. I mean, hey, I know hey, his things have changed. Yeah. God ain't changed. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I hope I've helped you tonight. Or you say, if you die tonight, do you know that you go to heaven? Just bow our heads. Be honest, come song with Brother Wayne have it here. Just stand together. Stretch. I know you've been sitting. And uh, let me just ask a question. Do you know that you know that you're saved? Why do you know you're saved? Because Jesus said I know. Yeah. Amen. That's right. And you know, while we come and get ready, uh, you know, sometimes isn't it wonderful to know? I mean, I, I know Brother Wayne's a little younger than I am, a little younger. But we, we, I know that I'm definitely in the fourth quarter of my life. I don't have a lot of time left. You know what I want to do with it? I want to honor God with it. I want to preach to where I get in the pulpit and begin to say stupid things. And I hope my wife's got enough sense at times that you need to quit. You know, I, I'll be, I, you know, uh, I had to do that to one of my precious preacher's friends. I said, the best thing you do is quit right now and let people remember for who you really are. You have to make him some bad mistakes. In the court. And he did. He honored my he honored my advice. He quit. Preach no more. But hey, right now I know it. Didn't you? Would you just if you know one hundred percent you're saying would you raise your hand? Just wave it to Jesus. Give him a wave on. Amen. He's good, isn't he? I mean, with everything wrong in this world, thank God the body and boy, the sickness here just you think about this church. It's a, uh, uh, our church was a little better, but I, I just can't get over this sickness. This is this is three years of it. I mean, it's just been sick month sickness all but thank God we headed to land where there'd be no more sick. If you couldn't raise your hand tonight. As we sing a couple verses of, of some invitation, and Brother Wayne is coming to close the church now. Would you mind, God? Do you have somebody that you know that your life, so a preacher, I know somebody's been living and for 20, 30 years and sin and, and it doesn't seem to bother you. need to get on this off and yeah, for it. That God will plow their hearts with holy conviction and help them to come <laughs> to Jesus before his eternal life because they have a false assurance. Yeah. Now, I'm not trying to get you to doubt the salvation. What I'll give you tonight is scripturally. Yep. But a lot of preachers try to do that. But hey, I, I'm, I'll just preach through the test tonight. Where are you tonight? Let's sing.